Faith is something that is so strong it can move mountains. When Caruso's crew started, there was no, there was no fancy record. There was no buildings. There was no national rankings. No reputation that preceded us. And uh, for them to come on board uh, blindly is one of the reasons why I love them dearly. And now here are the You know, I remember we were we were down our very first year we, we played in the national championship game down in Roanoke, Virginia. And there's a ridge that you look over and the sun was going down. And over the ridge, unbeknownst to me, I saw these ridiculously large duct tape tools that start descending on the hill and it was Caruso's crew and totally surprised us. And they came chanting into the stadium. And in a moment, you went from feeling out of sorts, uh, uncomfortable, away from home, to just, uh, I don't know, kind of like a mother's hug or a warm blanket, just made you feel good. So 14 years ago, uh, Coach Glenn Caruso came to the university um, and the football program was consistently like two and eight, just not very good. Um, and the seminary guys came in and said, Coach, we're gonna support you win or lose, no matter what. We're 100 plus college guys who love college football. Um, and kind of organically, the Caruso's crew was born. And so we began a, a cheering uh, section, I guess you could say. And so they adopted this persona of Caruso's crew, that they're rebuilding a program. And that was why they look like construction workers. From the flannel to the suspenders to the, to the uh, five o'clock shadows and the ridiculously large six foot tools made out of duct tape that have weathered more storms and more years than I ever thought they could are kind of symbols of what we, we hold near and dear. No matter who they're playing, and no matter what weather, no matter what the score is, if we're up 96-0, we'll be there and we'll be loud and proud. And if it's zero to 96 the other way, we'll still be there and loud and proud. Rain, snow, sleet, doesn't matter. We'll be there and we'll have it back. Um, but the, the first crew of guys had just kind of iconic names. So there is a guy, Will Beardmore, who went by Beardy. There are the Shovelin Brothers, who went by Shovels. Um, and a bunch of other kind of names in this style. And so now we've got new helmets um, and we're able to put kind of our own names on them. So Schmitty, who's Zach Schmitz, the senior. Um, and then minus was our BP. So I go by oil spill. <laughs> <laughs> a typical game day for Crusoe's crew is we get up in the morning and we have Holy Hour and Mass together. And about 20 minutes before gate opens, we'll meet in the, one of the bathrooms and just start blasting pump up music painting our face on, getting our helmet, getting the spinners on, and just generally getting hyped up. Then we'll grab our tools, and as soon as the gates open, we walk in and we generally just get the stadium rocking. And when the game starts, we're bringing it for the entire game. If you can talk after the second half, you didn't do your job. Whenever we score points, we celebrate by hoisting up persons from the crowd. The crew will gather around them and lift them up in the air in celebration for every single point. Unless we're up by like 90, then we have to go by 10. My favorite chant by far is the Olay chant, which you bring out every time we score. It's my favorite because it means we're going up and the other team's going down. We'll take our helmets off, we'll jump around in a circle, chant, ole, 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 ole.
There are three tools that the crew uses. One of them is the hammer, which we do after big hits and sacks. Here you go. Hammer, 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 hammer. The wrench is also for defense, for turnovers. Intercepted by Joe Hurd. And then the saw we use for big plays on offense. When our running back cuts through the line like he's a saw going through wood. <laughs> what does it mean to you now that the football program is going to be one? We want Bama. <laughs> no. Say that again. <laughs> For the crew, going D1 is just a huge opportunity to elevate our game. We're gonna to need to be better, be louder, be prouder, and really bring it, and be a D1 student section. Tackle by Hunter Mills. Father Kelly has been an instrumental part of our team for years before he was the rector. It was a great honor to be selected as chaplain for the football team. If there's any way I can support Coach and his team, I do it in a heartbeat. And I just could not think of a better person to ask to be our chaplain. He's competitive as all get out now. I mean, he is one of those voices that I can hear behind me, and there's not a lot of them. There's the crew, and there's my wife. I'm conditioned to hear Rachel's voice up there near the press box, even though she's right not behind me. And I can hear Father's voice. And uh, when I do, it brings me back home. And uh, he's doing an amazing job with our men. One time before our game, we had a student ask us, what's it take to join the crew? And we told him, you gotta join the seminary. What did he say? Heck no. In 2014, I get a call from Father Becker. And he said, well, we have a man who's interested in the seminary and his name is Jordan Roberts. He was the state Gatorade player of the year of Wyoming. And I said, I know exactly who he is. 2,400 yards and 42 touchdowns. I know exactly who he is. He said, um, do you think you can find a, a place on your team for him? And I said, a father, I, I think we can do that, father. So Jordan Roberts was not recruited by me. He was not recruited by anybody else on our staff, but he was called to be a part of our team uh, by a higher power, quite literally. And he was the national player of the year. And uh, the first year he was with us, rushed for about 2,200 yards and 46 touchdowns. And when he arrived, he brought a depth and a breath of faith into our locker room and rejuvenated it in a way that I didn't even know it needed to be rejuvenated. There are a lot of similarities between Division I athletics and being a seminarian. And I would say the first thing is learning to make sacrifices and things that you give up for the sake of the community, but then also for where you want to go with your life. You know, football is such a unique sport. There are 110 guys, almost the same number that's in the junior seminar, 110 guys that you are asking to lessen almost every faction of what they do selfishly for themselves and buy into the idea of the we, the greater good. And it's almost exactly what Father Kelly is asking those seminarians to do, which is give of themselves in every way you possibly can with every ounce in your body. The similarities are not just parallel, but they are eerily similar. And I think that's one of the reasons why the two groups get along so well and support each other, probably as good as any I see on campus. The three things that I truly care about, truly care about in this world, is my faith, my family and our football program. Those are the three buckets. So to be at a place where those three don't have to be juggled, but where those three can come together in unison, that's a blessing.